add them together here, the x variable will cancel. Okay. See how 5x minus 5x or 5x plus minus 5x, that goes away? Yeah. Now, for the y, you have minus 12y plus 11y. That's minus 1y. Mm -hmm. Equals equals 1. 207 plus negative 206 is 1. Now, we have not solved for y. y is not by itself. It's got this negative 1 in front. How do we undo the negative 1? Oh, we divide. Divide by negative 1. Good. So y equals negative one the answer is b it is b good okay number two so a lot of students they just they just always use elimination 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 and i mean i can understand why it, it is in some ways uh like it always works but not necessarily the best uh best choice uh for this um here the second equation can be easily solved for x by adding 13y to both sides. x equals 13y minus 316, like that. OK. Is that OK? Yeah. All right. So the. The issue, I guess, is that the numbers get pretty big. We're going to substitute this back into the other equation for, for x. So it's 4 times 13y minus 316 plus 15y equals 344. Okay. All right, so now I have to multiply both of these by, by 4. So that's 52y for the first one minus 1,264 for the second. So you can see the numbers get pretty big. Now we have to add the 1,264 to both sides. All right, so. I'm going to grab a calculator. Uh, why don't you double check that 4 times 316 is 1264, and then go ahead and add the two numbers together on the right for me, please. Sure. Like 1,608. For the addition of them, yes. And then take 52y and add it to 15y. That's 67y on the left. OK. And then divide both sides by 67. So y equals, go ahead and calculate that for me. Twenty-four. It is twenty-four. Now that answer is not there, and that's because we're not solving for they. They want the value of x, not y. So you use the value of y back in this this original equation up here. The fact that x is thirteen y mm -hmm. minus three hundred and sixteen. So you have to take that value of y, plug it back in here for y, and. Uh, See what you come up with. That would be negative four. There you go. Okay, so up to number three. All right, it says, what is the y value in the solution to the system? 
Okay, so again, we've got we've got the scenario where one of the variables, in this case y, can be easily solved for. So uh -huh. we're going to take that first equation. I'm going to rewrite it here. Minus 11x equals 395 plus y. We're going to subtract 395 from both sides. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite here with the variable on the left. Y is minus 11x minus 395. It's, it's like the last problem in the sense that we solve for one of the variables, but we don't really solve for it. I mean, we get we get it in terms of the other variable. Mm -hmm. So this this has to be substituted into the other equation for for y. Your, your instructor chose to get these really large numbers here. Not sure why. I mean, all these can actually be done in a calculator um, or software to, to solve it pretty quickly. But I mean, anyway. So go ahead and multiply this 14 in to both of these and uh, let me know what you uh, come up with. You have those numbers for me? Uh, no, not yet. Hold on. So now I have them. Uh, negative 154x minus 5,530 equals, yeah, yeah. big number. Yes, and, and so you just want to be careful here with the calculations. You just want to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, you yeah. know, be careful as I move things around, okay? Yeah. And so we're gonna we're gonna do this in pieces here. We're gonna add 154x to both sides, and then we're gonna add 634 to both sides. So I'll do the right one here. You grab a calculator again and and do that minus five five three zero plus six thirty four. That'd be negative four thousand eight hundred ninety-six. Okay. Divide both sides by one hundred and forty-four. That'd be negative thirty-four. X is negative thirty-four. Good. Okay, but again, that's it's like ah, we did all that work, and that's not even the answer because we we had to. It was easier to solve for y and then use that to get x, but that means you have to put that back in here uh, for y. So y is negative eleven x minus three hundred and ninety five. Go ahead and put that negative thirty four in for x. Let's see what you come up with. So 
So when I did that, I got, um, wait one second, hold on, negative 21. Okay, very good. All right. So the next question is, unfortunately, something we did not cover in any of the lessons. I'm, I'm surprised that it's here. It's it's in the it's in the course, but it's just it's just that it's not not um, not here. So let me let me see if there's a a way that I can show you real quick how to do this. All right, so I'm gonna I'm going to um, share a new screen here um, and and show you how you could work this out um, another way. So Desmos has a, a matrix solver, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna call this matrix A, and this matrix is three rows and four columns. And what I'm gonna do here, if you don't know if you can see the equation on, on your side, but I'm writing the coefficients in these positions and then the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. This is one of the, the I, I'm not using this one, but when I said, hey, I'm using some software, this is this is kind of what I mean. You can You can go out and find something that will do the calculations for you so you don't have to do them all by hand. Because so can, yeah, because at some point it's just it's just ridiculous, just too much. So the uh, that's that's the matrix. Everything's good there, and I'm going to hit enter. So now uh, there's this thing called RREF, and what it does is it basically solves the matrix for you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of magic, I suppose, um, but it, 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 it's uh, it's it's this is good to do only after you you've kind of done a few on your own. So all the other ones we did could have been solved this way, you, you know, no no uh, showing your work, but it's 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 a good it's a good uh, result here. Let me go back to the other screen here and try to help you interpret what the what this means. So. I've, tried to help you out by showing this in here. Um, the first column is X, the second column is Y, and the third column is Z. So this first row means that one X plus zero Y plus zero Z equals one. And zero times anything is zero. So it's really, this first row is really X equals one. Okay, the second row, is zero times X plus one times Y plus zero times Z equals negative four. Okay. And when you when you say, okay, I'm not gonna include the ones with zero, it becomes Y equals negative four. And you can probably figure out pretty quickly what the last one is. It's zero X plus zero Y plus uh, one Z equals four. And that corresponds to Z equals four. So notice that you can just read the right, the last column there, and that is the solution. Mm -hmm. wow. All right. So if we need to, we can we can look at that again. Um, I'm not anti calculators. I just would prefer that uh, you know we not use them when we can do them other ways. Especially when you got to show your work. Kind of hard to show your work when you're. Doing that, use the calculator every time. So, all right, number five here. I think we're moving a little slow through this, but I think it'll pick up here. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. All right, so we we had some problems like this uh, last time, and and you, we're gonna. I'm going to circle the position where X is in. See how it's in the lower left, lower left, lower left lower left. So we have to we have to include the operators. It's 5x plus, so that, that plus comes from here, then negative 10 minus, that comes from this one here, 17 equals 
negative 12. Is it clear how I got those numbers? Yeah. Okay. Because we're going to be doing that again in the next one and might might ask you to, to try solving some of it. Um, this is just a, a, a linear equation. It's a multi-step equation. Would you try solving this for X? And keep in mind that because you have the answers, you could also try the answers. Now, I don't, I don't really want you to do that, but if you want, it, it is allowed. Like you could, you could try, you know, two and see if it works. Negative one, three, or you could solve it the way you normally do. Okay. Let me just try with, I'm going to just do the regular derivative. Mm -hmm. It's B. It is, it is B. Very good. Okay. Let's keep going here. Um, number six. Might have been, I don't know if you had the ability but if, in or time now, but it's always good to print these out um, sometimes and see them in front of you. Um, notice that the... Um, value of x is right there kind of like middle bottom and keep in mind that this one does have parentheses here could you try to write the equation you don't have to solve it could you just try writing the equation for me and then i'll write it as well basically i want you just to extract that middle bottom value from each of these okay so the one x plus negative 20 plus 15 equals seven. Keep in mind there's a negative right there. So it'd be, it'd be one X minus parentheses, uh, minus 20 oops. plus 15 equals seven. Okay, oops. All right, now uh, remember order of operations, you, you combine what's inside parentheses first. So you're going to combine this, then negate it if it's negative. Mm -hmm. See if you can solve this one on your own, please. Okay. X equals two. Okay. That sounds pretty good. All right. Number seven is a little bit different. Yeah, uh, th this approach, there's a lot of distractions, but the approach here of, of circling where the variable is and then circling the same position and all the other ones uh, should help here. So would you, would you again, just attempt to write the equation and then I'll, I'll also write it for you. Okay. Or F X minus in parentheses negative 13. Oh, okay, one second. I think I'm confusing myself. So in parentheses, it would be when I'm lost. Oh, this is so confusing. I don't get it. It'd be I can't even form the point. I'm so confused. Let me start start with the parentheses on the left. Yeah. There's but big parentheses like, on the right. So you have to write, you have to, and then you're just you're just putting the number. So then negative the oper then the operator, then the number, those parentheses. Negative. So four x minus 
13. You have to start left to right, left to right. I mean, 13 minus 4x. It's negative 13, though. I, I did say negative 13. Okay. All right. Right now, the are the parentheses needed? No, they're not needed. So go ahead and solve this equation from here. All right. Okay, negative five is the answer. Okay. Let me just double check here. So we got negative four X minus 28 equals minus eight. Add 28 to both sides. Yes, X is negative five, very good. Okay, is it like the next one is, is similar? Like what, I guess one of the things that could also help here, right? Um, like this also is included, the operators included the parentheses, the plus, the equal. I just don't want to circle everything, you know? <laughs> uh, so somehow uh, you start with the leftmost thing, whatever that is. Sometimes it's a number, sometimes it's a parenthesis, and, and you've got to be able to write the equation left to right. So another, another one here to do that, to attempt to do that with. Um, this this uh, right here should really, I mean, this equals, the matrix really should be over here. So I'll write that for you. But I'd like you again to try to write the, the equation. All right. Negative two X minus fifteen. Um plus negative 14 equals negative 19. Okay. So then I know if you had it in front of you in a circle, it, I heard uh, heard one number off, probably just, just because of the way it's, it's positioned here. So um, yeah, it's a negative two X plus negative 15, like you said, plus negative 14. Now we could include the parentheses, right? But they're not really needed because nothing's going on out here. Yeah. equals negative 23. All right, so go ahead and uh, solve this, please, just like you did the last one. I'll just rewrite it here slightly. Uh, okay, just one second. Uh, D negative three. Good job. All right, so we're doing good. Um, going to, we're going to do 10 before we do nine. And the reason is, is we want to remind ourselves about the size or the dimensions of the matrices. So 
um, if you recall, it's it's rows and then columns. So this this first one is a two by two. Wait, are and, we doing number nine or did we already do it? All right, I'm on, I'm, I'm, okay. so I, I did mention we're gonna do 10 before nine. Oh, right, sorry, I forgot. Okay, so let me know when you're ready because we, we, we're, we're trying to do this in a way where sometimes I do them out of order because it makes sense in, in the sense of like, it. yeah, okay. We, we want to talk about the dimensions of each of these matrices, okay? Because mm -hmm. we, we talked at length about, well, you can only multiply them if the inner dimensions match. Right. Okay? And so we have to be able to write the, the, the dimensions of each of these matrices. So this first one under A is two row by two columns. Yeah. And then this one next to it is also a two row by two column. And these inner dimensions match. Yeah. And that's good. That's really good. Okay. Mm. And so we're going to look at B and do the same thing. It's rows by column. So this first matrix here has one, two, three, four rows. And then it has two columns. The second one here has two rows and it has one column. one column. Do the inner dimensions match? Yes. This is good, this is good. Okay, so I'd like you to Tell me the size or dimensions of each of these matrix for letter C, please. Okay. How many rows, how many columns? It's four by two. Agreed. And then the other matrix is Four by four. Okay. Do the inner dimensions match? No. No. So this is bad. Okay. So there, that's the correct answer. That's the one that's not possible. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, the reason we did this one first is when you're multiplying matrices, as we're as we're asked to do in number number nine, you want to first decide if it's even possible, because there's no reason to start multiplying if it's not possible. And we, and we do this all the time in real life, like like you check your phone to see if the road's closed or if the restaurant's yeah. open. You don't just show up and be like, "Hey, <laughs> like, is this even possible?" So we need to write the dimensions of each of these. So this first one is a one by four. And the second one is a four by one. And remember, it's always rows by columns. Yeah. So it works. We can multiply. Exactly. Now, now the next thing is that the new matrix is the is the other dimensions. It becomes a one by one, meaning one row and one column. So the only possible answers are A and C. Because they the A and C are the only ones that have one row and one column in them. Yeah. All right. Okay. So to do this, this is this is where you know it's a little tedious, but you have to do it this way. You take the row and you multiply it by the column. So you take nine times four plus. 20 times negative 2 plus negative 10 times 13 plus negative 16 times 19. All right. All right, so go ahead and grab a calculator and uh, see what you come up with. Okay.
negative 438. So the answer right. is very good. Okay, so let's look at number 11. There's some more matrix stuff later, but it's it's not related to what we just did. You only even though we we had like four or five of those multiplications in one of the assignments, they only gave you one on the on the homework there. All right, so it says which system has exactly one solution? So graphically, what this looks like is if there's no solutions, they're parallel. Okay. If there's one solution, they intersect in one place. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So we're going to graph these. All right. So I want you to graph A and I want you to go to your Desmos and graph A, just A, exactly the way it's written. Y plus 4X equals minus 2 in one line. Y equals minus 4X plus 5 in the next line. Can you repeat that one more time, please? Yeah, if you, I'm asking you to go to Desmos and graph just letter A, just graph these two equations in your graphing calculator, um, because we're we're looking for a scenario where the lines, excuse me, intersect or don't okay. intersect. We're trying to figure out which ones intersect, and the best way to do it is to graph. Yeah, obviously. It's going to be a lot faster than solving them by hand each time. That is true. Okay, for the first one, they're parallel. So that one's out. So now graph the second one. And what I would do is, is uh, I would probably just erase them. You could uncheck the graph symbol to sh to, so that it doesn't show up, but we don't really need them anymore. The second one's also parallel. Yes, so that's out. All right, now, if you're going to graph C, you could actually graph either C or D. It doesn't really matter because one will work and one won't. Uh, just be careful with this, this minus one fourth in C here. What it really means, you're graphing it it's in terms of how you write it. It's minus one over four times X. X is really, it's really in the numerator or it's kind of off to the side or it's not in the bottom though. So be careful of how you graph that one if you decide to graph C. Uh, it's not C either. Okay, let me, so I, I've got, I've got a graph of C up. Uh, let me. So, so here's what I have my graph for C looks like. And you're saying yours looks different than this? Oh, no, it looks exactly like that. I just. OK. OK, so do they intersect in one place? Yeah. Yes, there you go. Latitude. We got to keep it simple. And and there's and. That's what you're looking right now. It's kind of interesting. The way the brain works is, you know, if you if you see something wrong like two times in a row, sometimes the third one you just say is wrong, even if it is right. It's uh it's a really weird thing. All yep. right. So here is number 12. All right. James is asked to solve. following system of equations by elimination, which of the following steps would be the best way to begin? So you see that y and minus 2y are opposite in signs? So the, John, you kind of right here, the y is positive 
Yeah. And minus two i is negative. And that's what that's what you're looking for with elimination is you really want one to be positive and one to be negative, the coefficients. So to to eliminate y, we really want that y in the top equation to become two y. So what would you multiply the top equation by? How do you go from one y to two y? Uh, you would multiply by 2y, not 2y, sorry, 2, just yes. 2. Yes, perfect, yes. And and so we're looking for the one that says multiply equation 1 by 2. That would be C. There it is. Good. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to write, I'm going to write 13. I'm sorry, I'm going to snip in 13, but I'm going to I'm going to do it without the multiple choice. And, and then what we're going to do is write the system and then see which one matches. OK, that's generally a better approach than than trying to look for the answers, um, because the answers kind of can all look the same in some ways. So it says uh, a high school is selling tickets to its winter concert. Adult tickets cost $4 and child tickets cost $2.50. 900 tickets are sold. So that's our first equation. There's, there's what I call a quantity equation or a total equation. Okay. We know that the adults plus the, the child or children is 900. How do we express that over here on the left with and we're not talking about money. We're just talking about like, like tickets, total tickets. Like 900, like we could use T as for tickets. Well, we know that 900 is, is the total. You're right. What, what, what quantity represents the ticket for an adult? Uh, a. A. We don't know the value of A, but A could be 500. Who knows? Right. What about, what about child, children? Uh, C. C. So if you take A plus C, that's 900. Right. Okay. Then there's also a money equation. So the money equation is where you take the price times the quantity plus the price times the quantity. Do we know the price of adult tickets? No. I shouldn't wait. No, they did. They cost four dollars. Four dollars. Do we know how many adult tickets are sold? No. So we call that A. Four times A. So if you sell one adult ticket, you get four dollars. If you sell two adult tickets, you get eight dollars, and so on. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yes. All right, do we know the price of the child ticket? $2.50. Okay, do we know how many child tickets are sold? 900 tickets are sold. Just child tickets, that's oh, the total. No. no, we don't. So what did we use to represent the number of child tickets that were being sold? C. And then how much is the total amount? What is the total sales amount? The total amount? Um, yes, how much did they make when they? They made like, they made $2,820. So this is your first equation. This is your second equation. Now, I'm going to snip in the answers. All right. And uh, you're going to have to decide which one is correct here. Let me just give you a little more room. There we go. Well, looking at the, the answers, the correct answer for this would be A. Okay, good. Okay.
All right, so 14 is a really good question. It, uh, it gives you the solution, but you don't know which system it comes from. So what that means is you have to actually try the answers in every single one. So I'm just going to go down to D and, and show you this for D for the moment. Um, so what I mean by that is, is this is X and this is Y. X is negative 3, Y is 5. So down here in D, 3 times negative 3 plus 2 times 5, does that equal 1? Is 3 times negative 3 plus 2 times 5, does that equal 1? Uh, let's... Yes, that equals one. That was one. So that's good, but it has to work in both. So is six times negative three minus four times five equal to two? And again, you're welcome to use a calculator, but this is this is the the approach. Um, Negative 18 minus 20, is that two? No, it's negative two. It is not. It is, well, actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's negative 18 minus 20, it's negative 38. So it's still off, but just, just you know, be careful with your signs there. So what I'd like you to do, and, and you can start at A or B or C, I want you to try these numbers in the systems. All right. And uh, I'm just going to step away for 30 seconds, but I, uh, I expect that if you start at A, you'll find the answer relatively quickly. All right. Does that work in the first one? Uh, so for the 5x minus 3y equals 12, it does not equal 12. Okay, so you're saying B is out? Yeah, B Did is you, out. So you, you start at B, not, um, not A, that's fine. So that means yeah. that B is out. I'll do A right now since I started with B. Does, it doesn't matter. Like you, you're up you're to a point here where if, if it works in A, great. If it doesn't work in A, then it's C. So it's you're you're so close. When, yeah. uh, so I'm going to just do A right now and let's see. It's A. It's A. Good. All right. Okay. Find B minus A. So when you when you when you have two matrices, and it's good to it's good to rewrite them, um, even though it feels like it's extra work. It's just easy to. We, we used we're used to looking at things left to right, so it's way better if you can look at things uh, in that in that order from left to to right. So this is B, this is A. So your your answer here is minus 15 minus a minus two. That's the top left. Then it's zero minus 11. That's that's top right. And then one minus 20 bottom left, minus seven minus a minus six bottom right. So you'll need to calculate each of these and uh, see what you come up with.
Uh, I got B. That's correct. Good. All right. So we're going to stop here for the moment here. Go ahead and stop. Uh, stop recording.